record. Hello, and welcome to the Jason Cavanis Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cavanis. Our guest today is Ted Yell. Ted, you ready to be great today? Absolutely. Ted is a founder and CEO of Think Impact Inc., which was founded in June 2017 in Think Helping, a nonprofit within Think Impact. Think Impact Inc. is based out of Rochester Hills, Michigan, and works with organizations to help expand the digital f- footprint. In addition to helping companies expand their digital presence, Think Impact also provides graphic design, website development, project management coordination, marketing consulting, and event promotion. Ted recently won the Young Alumni 10 with the 10 Award from Oakland University, which recognizes business leaders are making an impact in the local community. Ted, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back. So, Ted, what's been keeping you busy recently? Yeah, um, just been working on, on some projects within some some fields that have been trending, uh, particularly within the, the medical space, as well as 3D printing. Um, obviously, with kind of what's going on now, uh, that happens to be a big thing. And, and so kind of the technology part of it, as well as on the medical side, um, you know, transferring records um, from, you know, the traditional route from paper prescriptions onto a more digital platform um, where the information can be transferred in real time to, to nurses and doctors. So, Ted, how long have you, what made you start your company? Like, talk about your entrepreneurial journey a little bit. Yeah, um, so before I really ventured into the entrepreneurial ecosystem, um, I held some corporate roles as well as doing some internships. Um, so in the internship realm, I worked for a sports and entertainment company called General Sports. They're also based in um, downtown Michigan. And the owner, the marketing project and research that I did with that company eventually landed into um, a stadium that was that was built recently called the Jimmy John's Stadium, um, where it focuses on up, up and coming as well as um, past talent to develop their own league, um, similar to the MLB, to their farm system where they have, you know, uh, different leagues within that system. So that was one part. And then I also worked with uh, Al Brooks Patterson. He was the county executive uh, for Oakland County. So I got to see marketing through a government lens and utilized all my marketing um, expertise that I learned at OU where I did my bachelor's and master's in marketing um, to help market their, their initiatives for the local county area. And then I worked for a company called Henkel. Um, they're a German multinational corporation based out of Dusseldorf. Worked in their aviation department, um, helping market their chemicals, maskants, and all of the, the different sort of uh, chemicals that are part of an air, aircraft at the end of the day. And then um, worked for a robotics company called AIM. So they develop AGVs, um, automated guided vehicles, and work more on the marketing side compared to the technical side. Um, so through all of these different experiences, I felt like I had enough marketing experience and I started Think Impact in 2017. And um, we're still a young company, three years old, uh, but we've also diversified our client base with, uh, with our marketing expertise. So Ted, what, what, can you define digital marketing? What, what is that? Yeah, so obviously digital marketing is, is a pretty broad, <laughs> broad field where our core competency is, is within the social media world. So that means paid advertisements, developing content um, from an organic standpoint, and also aggregating content. So mixing up the content between you know, what a company is doing in that particular industry, and then also using newsworthy newsworthy publications to benchmark where the industry is heading and um, how these companies are, are slowly trending in that direction. Um, and then we also do graphic design, which we integrate within our content generation calendar. Um, that's where we provide clients a week of content in advance. Um, and that's done very intentionally, um, you know, in case they have a new product launch or service launch um, that can be included within, you know, that content for that week. Um, and then we also utilize a CRM called Hootsuite, where we push out the actual data, the content on all of the major platforms like Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, and then we provide analytics at the end of each week along with the timestamps. Not as detailed as, say, a Google Analytics, but more on a post-by-post basis, um, you know, to see where the, what the engagement looks like, what the traffic looks like. Um, and then when 
we realized that there are low levels of engagement than providing an alternative strategy to maximize other platforms as well. So Ted, why should a company or a small business owner even be worried about the digital footprint? What's so important about it? Yeah, I mean, it, everything seems to go digital these days compared to the traditional um, advertising methods, whether it's, you know, direct mailers or doing print ads. I mean, obviously those have been the traditional routes of marketing, but more and more companies are, are transferring to digital um, just because of the interactive portion where they can interact with clients. Um, live stream their own company-wide events, you know, conduct more uh, business opportunities essentially through um, through their own networks, whether it's through LinkedIn um, and interacting, having that kind of interactive experience within, um, you know, attracting prospective clients. So, Ted, what, what, what are small business owners getting wrong about um, social media? What, what, what mistakes are they, are they making? I mean, I, I think a lot of people, when they think about social media, they don't really, um, you know, realize that, you know, if you're marketing on one platform, the same message and the way that it's resonated on one platform will not necessarily resonate on the, you know, on other platforms. For example, Facebook is like Twitter in that you can add a lot more text um, as well as add an addition, you know, add visual images within the platform and it turns into like a news feed and a lot of people use Twitter, Facebook, and even instances and like LinkedIn as a news feed to kind of get their news. Whereas Instagram, you know, it has to be tailored specific to that platform and a much more visually aesthetic appeal, um, you know, for it to get any, get any traction. It's like, you know, TV spots, if you use the same kind of messaging throughout each platform, uh, you have to find the right way for each platform as opposed to having one standardized way of, of describing the content. If, if someone want to have a, a um, career in social media, is there a certain type of degree they need to get in college or do you even need a, do you even need a degree? No, I mean, I think nowadays, I mean, obviously it would be good because it would, you know, give you a leg up compared to your competitors. But I think now, um, you know, within LinkedIn, for example, there's a software called Linda where you can get a certification by taking a couple of courses and getting certified, or you can turn to other resources such as HubSpot. Um, you know, there are other online programs where you can actually pay to have, get certification in those criteria. Um, you know, everything is being more digital in that way as well, but obviously having um, a good foundation and a bachelor's degree at least uh, would, would be better um, from a knowledge standpoint. So someone's, you know, either doing a career change or getting out of college, doing social media, they have a degree, and they're looking for the first job, what would you recommend them to do? Like, they have no experience, nothing, just they want to do social media. Yeah, I mean, I would look at, first of all, I would drill it down. So first I would look at the, the industry that they want to get into, which if it's social media, then, um, you know, it's all tailored by keywords. So I would type in digital marketing or social media. Um, one good feature in LinkedIn is you can actually drill down by your search search filters and find people um, within that industry, you know, regardless of location and start sending out emails or what they call uh, LinkedIn mails, introduce themselves saying, you know, hey, I am looking to secure uh, a career in this field, attach a resume, or even maybe ask them for a job shadow. That way they can see um, in reality, what a typical day looks like within that, you know, that job, whether it's a community manager for a big company or a small business um, that they're looking to be involved in to get that experience. So, Ted, you talked a little about Google Analytics. Can you talk about that in a little more detail? I mean, what is that in case someone doesn't know? Yeah, so Google Analytics um, is a very useful analytical tool that provides um, visitors who visit the web page. It, it shows you you know, from where they're visiting, how long on each page that they're actually staying on, what device um, they're viewing the site from, uh, you know, and then it drills down even more into demographic data. So, you know, what the breakdown is by age range, um, what their career goals are or what their occupation is, uh, their position within that company. And so you get a fair share of information um, on a much more detailed, you know, breakdown, what the conversion rates are, what the click-through rates are, what the optimal rates are, um, you know, compared to industry standards and how, um, how that's 
specific to, to that own website. So you talk about Hootsuite. Can you talk about any other like to go the go to tools that you like to use? Yeah, Hootsuite is obviously a great one. Um, Buffer, I think, is is another great CRM. I, I believe you can store up to about five to ten different business accounts on a, on one uh, account. Um, and yeah, I mean, Buffer and and Hootsuite are the the two main ones that I use, um, just because of the ease of spreading out the information and from a scheduling and automate you know it, it automates very well. And so it's very um, platform friendly with all of the, um, the platforms that are out there. Obviously, TikTok is, is another emerging platform that's coming out there. Um, you know, it's kind of what I like to call YouTube 2.0 in a way. It's still in the baby stages of, of like YouTube, but that's another platform that's starting to be widely used as well. So, Ted, have you found that different size businesses approach social media in different ways? Yeah, um, so in terms of how we actually get approached, um, it's mainly been through LinkedIn. Um, a lot of, you know, people that we've done work for, clients that we've worked for, um, they refer us typically, so it's a combination of word of mouth as well as social media, particularly within LinkedIn and, and Facebook. Um, that's how we've generated most of our businesses. And then we've also worked with um, VCs and serial entrepreneurs within the area as well that have relationships that have seen needs for our, our services. Um, and so we've gotten introduced through their networks as well. And do you focus on a certain size business? No, I mean, being a small business ourself, um, you know, I, I just take the approach that any time that I want to limit myself, it may not necessarily be a good thing considering we're a small business. So we don't, we try not to, have one particular target market, but rather be, you know, open to help out any business regardless of what industry they may operate in. So having said that, of course, we, everyone knows every customer is not, a good, is not a good customer. How do you go about disqualifying someone? Yeah, so typically when we get approached, um, we do our, or I do the internal research in terms of visiting their website, um, checking the resources that they have on their website, um, just to see the quality of work and what they, you know, the experiences that they've had. And also look, you know, look on their social media platforms, um, you know, whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, just kind of get a general sense how they're doing online versus compared to, you know, people's actual experiences using them. Um, and then after that, you know, schedule like a Zoom call, like we're having or Zoom call or Skype call and, and try to gauge from that point on. Ted, do you find that... Um people from different generations look at social media differently, like, you know, Generation X versus, you know, boomers versus, you know, millennial versus Generation Z. Do they all look at it differently? Yeah, I mean, at least in, in the experience I've had, uh, some of our clients are, are not millennials. Um, and, and so they have a completely different outlook on what it's supposed to be compared to how it's, you know, constantly evolving with all the technology out there, with all of the features that all of these platforms are constantly um, trying to add within their services. Um, and so that, you know, when we work with small businesses, that's another thing that we try to educate them on. I, I think some of them sometimes may have a misnomer about how social media can actually drive traction to their business, um, even when they have an established clientele. Um, and so that's where we, where we come in and, and try to educate them and, and work with them there. So speaking of education, I'm sure there's times when you sign a company up and a week later they want a results, right? How do you educate them to say, no, it takes like more than a week. It's going to take us some time. Yeah, I mean, so with, um, with the first initial clients, we, we typically do a case study um, and then show them the results. Um, obviously, we can't deep dive into the results, but we take them to the presentation through a presentation that we've developed. Um, so we walk them through step by step on how we approach the marketing process, what results can be expected, and then, um, you know, show them these case studies and how, from a statistical and numerical point of view, we've really grown, you know, whether it's their followers or whether it's, you know, the sold out events that we've had, some of which were in Detroit or California, and use those case studies to really drive that point home. So, so Ted, okay. on your LinkedIn, there's a post about the top digital trends for 2020. Can you talk highlight a couple of those? Yeah, so I think a couple of them was one, knowing who your customer is. Um, I think that's a lot of, that's main 
component for you know entrepreneurs starting out really to research your target audience um, to know what their uh, their personas are so what you know what they're inclined to be attracted to whether it's messaging content types of multimedia and, and that sort of thing um, you know video marketing is obviously picking up as well so that's one I think two is constantly engaging um, you know engaging with potential clients whether it's on LinkedIn uh, Instagram, reply, trying to reply to every post, um, and then developing an overall marketing strategy um, of how how you run your company and the the important points, you know, such as building a good objective, good goals, and then tailoring that to how you're actually going to accomplish those goals. It's you recently won an award, I believe, called the uh, Young Alumni with Intent Award from Oakland University. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So the Young Ten alum, Young Alumni 10 Within 10 Award is um, really a business-related uh, award that highlights differences that the businesses are making in the local community. Um, obviously, since it's an alumni award, most of them happen to be from OU. And so I was very fortunate to be uh, nominated by my marketing professor, who I've had both throughout my undergrad and my grad school days, um, to kind of provide an overview of you know, how I've been involved in campus. And through that award, it's opened doors for me that I think otherwise would be hard. Um, you know, whether it was doing a local partnership with the mayor's office here in Rochester Hills, uh, being a keynote speaker at a fashion event um, in Michigan, which then opened up more connections, and then um, being highlighted in the press, um, in the local press. Um, not very good at kind of seeking the attention of the press, um, typically like to kind of be a low key individual when it comes to that. But, um, but even through the press, it's brought more business opportunities for us as a whole as well. So Tess, so you do a lot in your local community. Why, why is that? Why is it important for you to give back to your community? For me, I mean, I've been I mean, fortunate to have, you know, a good supportive, um, you know, good supportive parents that have supported me in my entrepreneurship uh, goals and aspirations and, and all throughout my life as well. Uh, whether it's academics, work, and this whole entrepreneurship journey. So for me, I just feel personally that since I'm very lucky to have that, once you get to a certain point within the business realm, um, career or entrepreneurial journey, it's important to kind of give back and, and repay off that. Um, yeah, I don't think people realize how important it is to have like support, you know, because like even like your, your parents or your wife or your husband or your close friends, if they're even if they're just neutral, it doesn't help you, right? You got to have somebody actually supporting you. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. I mean, having the support of my parents and, and my wife as well, um, you know, it, it's been great. And so, you know, I believe once you have a good support system around you, it's, it's always important to, to pay that respect back, uh, whether it's through, you know, a nonprofit like we have or in some capacity or the other, um, you know, volunteering your time or you know, through different ways. So your nonprofit is actually like a, it's actually like a part of your company, correct? Yeah, um, so it's an arm within Think Impact. Um, so Think Impact was formed in 2017. Think Helping was formed in 2018. Um, and in the short two years that we've had the company, um, we've also developed relationships with major nonprofits such as the Coleman Detroit chapter, um, you know, the Epilepsy Foundation of Michigan. We actually helped manage the Race for the Cure last year in downtown Detroit. Um, which brought in a pretty large audience. Um, so uh, we always try to help out in that way, obviously at a more cost-effective rate since some nonprofits operate, you know, on a, on a limited budget. We don't want that. We try very hard for that not to be a barrier as well. Next, can you tell about your, what you've done for tech inclusion and what that is? Yeah. So tech inclusion is, um, is a, arm of Change Catalyst. Change Catalyst is a parent company and Tech Inclusion, they host about 50 conferences, give or take, uh, globally through the diversity and inclusion lens. So they have different keynote speakers within Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 50 companies, and then companies within the tech space that are on the up and coming. Um, and so we've been a major marketing partner for them for all, for most of their conferences as well. Um, and in, in addition to that, they also do research reports. Um, so those are reports that kind of derive, derive the demographics from these conferences um, and you know break it down. So we've helped them with their research reports as well as driving traffic to their events as well. 
So if I remember correctly, they're in the Bay Area. So how did yep. you link up with them? So, yeah, I mean, so we do a lot of virtual calls like these. Um, they, ha they have a team there as well, um, but it's mainly done virtually. We get together with their team, um, you know, every, every so often, depending on what their schedule looks like and, and uh, members of their team. And we decide kind of what parts of the reports that, you know, we're going to be responsible for. And then I meet with their key leadership team to develop a marketing strategy terms of how to market it through social um, to drive more registration, more traffic to their, um, to their conferences. So, so to them, you know, there's like, you know, literally thousands of social media people out there, social media companies. Is this like some kind of social media certification that people can get or anything like that? Or um, in, in terms of having like, you know, you know, how like, like, like accountants get a CPA, HR people get HR certification, mm -hmm. same thing like that for social media people. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there there are a couple of good resources. Um, HubSpot, I believe, offers a great uh, social media certification program that people can get um, to get certified in that. I believe Buffer has one as well. And then Google has a whole slew of, um, you know, social media certification courses and classes that you can go through to get actually certified. Um, and then Linda, as I briefly mentioned at the outset, that's a program within LinkedIn where you can take um, social media related courses through lynda.com, which is free, um, as far as I'm aware, to take those courses and, and get that certification and then attach that onto your LinkedIn profile. So, Chad, let's say there's a, a small business owner out there, they're doing social media by themselves, and they're like, oh, no, I got to hire someone to do this for me. What, what would you tell them to find the best person or best company to do social media for them? What should they be looking for? Uh, skill set is obviously a big key, um, you know, in terms of being familiar with, you know, the messaging, the content um, within these particular platforms and really study them in detail. Um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, as it relates to hiring, you know, if someone wants to start up their own business, I would, you know, utilize, try to utilize all of these resources that I briefly touched on to learn the ins and outs initially. And then once you grow to a certain point, then start thinking about hiring people, um, especially starting out as a small business. It, it may be, depending on where the business is at within their product life cycle, it may be a bit an added overhead cost, so to speak, if you're just starting out. Um, and then freelancing, you know, there's a lot of freelance platforms as well, like uh, uh, Fiverr and, and Upwork and Freelancer, where, you know, going through those and doing some projects through those websites provide, can provide some initial experience as well before um, either making the leap or, or joining a company as well. So Ted, should a small business owner um, go towards the hire an internal person or outsource or just depends on the situation? I think it, it depends. Um, obviously looking at it from a small business standpoint, the more in-house you can do, the better, um, just because it drives down the cost and you can, you know, assign those costs to different departments within your business. Um, so I'd say initially try to do as much as you can in-house, but, um, you know, if there are expertise or people that you know that can provide other technical services or other services that are related within the digital platform world, then you can outsource it. But I would say initially keep it in-house. Okay, what's your take on this as far as content? I think some people out there are like, say, don't really push out a lot of content because you put a lot of content and waters down your brand and it's too much stuff out there. Other people say, you know, put as much content as you can out there on, on many platforms. What's your take on those two views? Yeah, I mean, I would say push more content out um, just because the more a person gets familiarized with your brand. And by the way, content shouldn't just be aggregated from an unknown source or from a news media outlet that itself should not be categorized as content. Um, it, you know, it should be very personable, very company specific in developing quality content as opposed to just, you know, saying, Oh, I found this article that's in this industry. So that would be good to post and then just post random content, right? It, it really needs to drive home what the company does and how a potential customer or someone that's not in the industry can relate to that. And so the more that you can cross promote um, through different platforms, the better. Um, that way they can get a sense of the messaging and you know, it, it develops a more 
natural repertoire or brand messaging for the company as a whole. Do you, do you have a favorite platform right now? For me, I like LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn and Instagram are the two most um, underutilized platforms. I think everybody's used to Facebook and Twitter nowadays. Um, but I think, you know, particularly within Instagram, the, the paid ads are a huge um, resource for that's really underestimated when it comes to ads and attracting more followers. And if it used right, could drastically, you know, change um, how it operates and kind of the followers as well. Um, LinkedIn, I think, is another great platform, particularly within the B2B landscape. Um, again, I think, you know, used right that it could have a dramatic impact. Um, at least I can speak from our end. From a clientele perspective, we typically get client, you know, a lot of approach clients from there. Um, so those are the two platforms that I particularly like right now. Um, As I remember correctly, you also do a lot of work with interns from local area too, correct? Yep. Yep. So we, uh, yeah, we also would, you know, like to take on interns as well. Um, we had, we have two full-time employees now, me and a graphic design person, um, that we actually outsource the graphic design work to. Um, so she's, she was part of the company, but now we outsource to her. Um, so she's technically an employee as well, but yeah, I mean, obviously interns if you know, within the local community, uh, that's, you know, a vision that we've had as well for a while to involve, you know, the local community, whether that's through internships, part-time employment, full-time employment, um, really that way they can get their own experience, develop their own experiences and use that as a foundation for, um, you know, whatever experiences they might have in the future. Okay, so from your point of view, what are some good things going on in marketing? What are some bad things going on in marketing? Um, in terms of right now, I think, you know, the, the good part of marketing is, is, you know, a lot of platforms are, are finding loopholes, say, compared to, you know, traditional like Facebook or Twitter, for example, the, the up and coming of TikTok. I think that's, that's really been good for marketing. It's, it's another interactive way where users can kind of interact with their fan base, you know, whether if they're an influencer or from a B2B standpoint, they can provide good videos on how to approach certain things within business strategy. Um, and then, yeah, just, just utilizing the current platforms to the best of their ability. Um, you know, whether it's creating content, doing um, paid ads, or even joining groups where you introduce, talk about your company and industry specific groups and growing your audience that way. Um, and then on the bad side, I, right now don't see anything. Um, maybe the fact that there are too many platforms out there for, for every little thing within marketing. Um, and you know, but, um, that's kind of how I see it. I see it more, more good than, than bad. It's what is spam? <laughs> spam is when people inundate you with content that may not rest, you know, uh, that may not have anything to do with your business or they're trying to get sales or something and they keep on sending you these, you know, these links, you know, whether it's email campaigns or keep on pushing out videos that are strictly talking about their product or, you know, sending cold messages through LinkedIn um, with strictly a sales pitch rather than trying to develop a genuine relationship and then kind of let it work from there. Um, okay. Um, are there any penalties for sending out too much spam? No, I mean, it's just, I mean, obviously there are no penalties uh, for spam, but if it does get to a point where you're inundating your followers without relevant information, then they might unfollow your page or, you know, if they know someone within the same network, then that message can spread pretty easily. So it's, it's bad for practice. your employer brand then. Yeah. So Ted, what's your vision for your company? Vision is uh, to, you know, keep on expanding our capabilities. Um, you know, I think within the website development part, we're trying to learn, learn SEO and, and certain other strategies. So always kind of learning new skills and honing on, on those as well as growing our client base, which is, you know, that's always a constant goal with any small business. Um, and then growing, to, you know, the company as a whole, um, employing more people. Right now, we're still kind of in the, in the startup mode, even though we're three years in, but I'm um, hoping to, to have a solid team as well in the future. Ted, what uh, marketing people out there do you follow? In terms of influencers? Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so one is uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. He is like the social media <laughs> uh, guru, if you will. Um, you know, I highly recommend anyone to check it out, Gary V on YouTube, if you're not familiar with him. So Gary Vaynerchuk, um, number two, Mark Cuban. Um, you know, he is obviously dabbled in a bit of everything. Um, he's one of the sharks on Shark Tank as well. Um, Arlen Hamilton, she has definitely um, disrupted the VC space, particularly within the diversity and inclusion um, realm. She's invested in over, I think, 130 businesses with a little over 7 million in revenue. Um, so she is definitely an up and coming trailblazer within the VC world. Um, you know, Tony Robbins, uh, Tim Ferriss, and I could go on and on, but those are are just some of the, the influencers that I follow um, online and try to keep up with what's going on. It's, can you talk about why HR is important? Yeah, I mean, HR is important. You know, it's always important, at least from a small business standpoint, um, to make sure you have an effective onboarding process, um, you know, making sure the process is not too complicated, uh, you know, recruiting the appropriate talent. I think for me, that's when I look to hire someone, I'm very uh, picky and choosy just because I want to try to find the right talent that, you know, that can help us with what we need help with in the marketing realm, whether it's social media, graphic design. So I'm pretty, um, pretty big on trying to find the right talent. And then also being familiar with, you know, the legalities of bringing people on board in terms of, you know, benefits or, you know, just the legalities that small businesses have to typically go through when bringing someone on board and trying to always be conscientious of, you know, following those guidelines, um, not getting penalized. <laughs> Ted, understand you have something for our listeners today. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I would highly suggest, um, you know, checking out our website, www.thinkimpactfirst.com. Um, you can also follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, Facebook at Think Impact First. And the same for our, our nonprofit at Think Helping One on all of the major platforms. And yeah, so hope, hope you check us out and would, we would love to work with you. And to listen, we'll have the links to his gift and his social media on the show notes. You can find the show notes at www.cavernshrblog.com. So Ted, speaking of hiring, what do you look for? What characteristics do you look for someone when you hire them? Yeah, someone that's a um, recent graduate. Um, I know that may not be at the top of, of some of the company's list, but being a young company ourselves, um, you know, someone that has experience within the marketing realm, um, you know, someone that's familiarized with social media, graphic design, developing content, and someone who uses their knowledge and expertise um, and, you know, applying it with our company through some of the projects that we work on um, as well and being very familiar with kind of what is going on within the marketing world um, in terms of technology and, and platforms and, you know, trying to adjust and understand those, those points of view. Yeah, we come to the end of our talk, can you give us some advice on any subject you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, I would say for any, you know, aspiring entrepreneur out there um, to really be empathetic to the process as a whole of trying to actually secure a client rather than, um, you know, going through the checklist of actually securing a client because the process to get there is a long road. So, you know, um, try to be empathetic to each part of that, uh, you know, along that trail to landing the client. And I also think about how you can um, provide value to the end, you know, to the client rather than just thinking, oh, you know, it's a great, great client for me. Um, but, you know, have a much more broad sense of how you can provide value, even though it may not be something you may be familiar with, you know, think about providing value because that's important at the end of the day. Um, so that's number one. Number two is to develop a, a minimal viable product. That's a concept that's uh, described in a book called The Lean Startup, I believe by Eric Reyes. So basically what my point there is to, is to have a real need, a business need, uh, rather than turning a hobby into a business. Um, because the more solutions it can provide, the better it will be. It tells one thing amazing me about like new entrepreneurs is how many of them think in six months they're going to be Steve Jobs, right? Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. it's nowhere near reality, right? And even if you tell, try to tell them, they don't want to listen to you. Like, like I'm special, I'm different, you know? 
Yeah. Or maybe you are, but odds are you're not. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing about entrepreneurship. I mean, each day is different, you know, compared to, you know, say if you're working a nine to five right now, each day is different compared to that nine to five where it may be, you know, consistently expecting something. Some days are good, some days are worse, but, you know, it's all, you know, it's important to kind of look at those moments and realize that that's why you're in business and just not lean towards the good side or the bad side and, you know, either let that fuel one's ego or let that bring you down. Um, because entrepreneurship, there's no formula within the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Oh, yes, yeah, me too. Like when people start a business, I'm going to start a business because I'm going to be my own boss. Well, <laughs> they don't realize that, okay, your customer's your boss, your employees are your boss, you know, all the ones, I'm tired of working 40 hours a week, I'm going to work for myself. Well, you just yeah, I mean, doubled your hours working, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, being your own bo boss has its, you know, it's flexible and it has its positives and negatives. But um, at the end of the day, the person that is their own boss is responsible for a whole lot more um, and needs to kind of work more harder than most, depending on what industry and what the the logistics and infrastructure is within that. Um, so it's definitely a good thing to be your own boss, but it also comes with its own uh, ups and downs, if you will. And when you think about it, you know, like I think we talked about before an early conversation, you own your own business, like you're in charge of, of social media. That's a full-time job. You're in charge of the website. That's a full-time job. Every little thing is a full-time job, you know, cause you can't hire, hire any, hire any one yet, yet, you know, and if they do, you know, you'd be given an equity or the case to be or internship and all these yeah. jobs you got to do. And there's no way to do in the amount of time. So you're trying to focus, prioritize, and it's like, just make mistake after mistake after mistake. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's all about prioritizing. I mean, I, I, you know, just to give kind of a sense of of the importance of that, I, I typically get up pretty early in the morning, prioritize before all of the other meetings that I have throughout the day. That way I make sure I get those things done. And then, you know, whether it's conference calls or, or getting other assignments done, typically try to prioritize at the start of the day. That way those things get done before I, I take on more stuff. So here's one more for you. What, what is your advice to people on taking advice? From my point of view, everyone has advice for you, but it's, it's, it's from their lens. They don't really know what you, they, a lot of them don't really understand what you're doing. What's your, what your advice? What's your advice on taking advice? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, you know, I think it, it's good advice. I mean, for me, just to give an example, uh, my dad is an entrepreneur and my mom, you know, works in corporate. So for me, that's the perfect marriage of getting business advice because I, you know, I can lean on them, get very practical advice from them. Um, but in terms of giving advice, I think it's unique to each situation. Um, you know, for me, I'm not the kind of person that likes to dole out advice just because I, I still think I'm, you know, constantly learning something new every day. And so I'm not necessarily in that position to give advice, but if someone does ask for advice, I'll be more than happy to help them um, or at least describe the experiences that I had when I started my company. And hopefully that can help them in the long run. Ed, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me back on. Appreciate it. Oh yeah. I forgot to mention this is Ted's second time on the podcast. So thanks for being a second time guest. <laughs> uh, and to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. Remember to be great every day.